Welcome to Abba Holt Junction, and today, incline testing. If you ever wondered, can you get your loco up a 1 in 15? Watch this space. It's a long video, so apologies, but I've broken it down into chapters, so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Please enjoy, please subscribe. Thanks for coming. Okay, so just quickly on the setup. Um, it's quite a Heath Robinson test rig I've got set up here. Um, there's just some rails under those tracks uh, keeping them up. I've then got a bit more of a standardized section here where it then continues that steady incline right up to the top. On the way into the incline, which the class 121 is about to do, um, on the way into the incline there's two second radius set track curves to bring it into it. Um, I'm just using my standard Hornby Select. Um, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, I'm doing the runs at 30, 50% and 25%. I've actually done it at 10 as well, which I didn't film, but uh, it takes so long I thought that would be too boring. Uh, so yeah, that's the setup. Um, and yeah, essentially, apart from two, every wagon I own. Um, I'll weigh the wagons and uh, you'll see that shortly. Of course, it's not just the weight of the wagons that you uh, need to be thinking about. Um, the ones I'm using are typically older plastic wheeled wagons. Um, there's quite a lot of friction, I think, between those and the rails. Um, this is one of the nice uh, new ones I'm using, um, but the majority of them are the older uh, Hornby type from the from the 90s, noughties, yeah, these plastic wagons. Um, yeah, so it's not just the weight that's key, of course, it's the, the friction on the rails. Um, having this corner at the start there, as you can see, it's already inclining whilst, once it's going around that corner. That also makes it a bit harder. So even though the the main body of the incline is straight, um, there is a second radius curve heading into it, which the majority of the wagons are on as the loco hits the incline. So I think it's probably a reasonable test. Um, and yeah, it's a considerably steeper grade than uh, prototypical and what and what have you recommend. It's worth noting that you know, just because you can physically get your locals up a hill doesn't mean it's a good idea to do it. Um, on my layout, wherever possible, I'm going to minimise the length of the incline, so the amount of time that it's going up a steep gradient. And I'm also going to keep the wagons, uh, the train lengths very short. Um, I'm not going to be running, you know, eight carriage H HSTs or anything. Uh, the longest thing I'll be running is a coal train, and that'll only probably be, I don't know, six or seven wagons. So I've got light loads, um, and I'm going to minimise the amount of time that my locos have to go up these grades. So even though it can physically be possible, and it does allow you to get nice elevations in a very short space, I'm not necessarily recommending you should be doing it on your locos. Just, just demonstrating what's possible. I mean, this video is a case in point, trying to show um, how difficult it can be to raise your locos up, even to the height that's required to get over another one, um, through a tunnel or a bridge. Um, I can't actually fit it in <laughs> on this filming, so, you know, this, this would be way too big. This essentially is probably the best part of 8 foot, 2.4 uh, meters, um, and it stretches the whole length of my baseboards. So if I wanted to have, you know, this relatively steep incline for model railroads, it still takes up the whole length of my baseboards. So yeah, you've got to push it a bit. Or in my case, maybe quite a lot. Okay, so the two grades that we've got here, um, in total, the grade is 1 in 18.5, 
and for this first part up to the the first stud that we have here it's 1 in 17.5 so the first part is slightly steeper than the second part but marginally so um, Hornby on their bridge supports recommend 1 in 25 um, modelers typically recommend 1 in 50 and actual real railways aim for 1 in 100 obviously there's many many exceptions including one that used to run local to here down in the valleys called the Big Hill um, which was significantly steeper but yes typically 1 in 100 obviously there's COG railways and you know, Snowden and things like that which run a lot steeper for Nicholas is that a railway? Anyway, debatable. Um, but yeah, so this is one in 18.5 overall the whole length and there's no issues. The small bit of um, of this incline that I have on the, the layout, about 40 centimetres of it, runs at one in 16 and a half. So even steeper again, but only again marginally so. Um, and it's for a very short run. So yeah. Can locos go up steeper than what the suppliers recommend? Yes. Is it a good thing? Who knows, but I'm, I'm certainly going to give it a chance. As I said, keeping the trains as short as I can. Um, I'm certainly not going to be running big, long rakes of Mark III coaches. Okay, so on the setup, this is from the start of the incline, which is about there. We have to the end, we have two point three meters. Two point three meters, and then in terms of the the elevation gained, we've got a total elevation gain of thirteen centimeters, and then an intermediate gain then, which is nicely measured with my steel rule here, over sixty two centimeters from the start of there, we have. A four centimeter gain. Centimeter gain over one point four meters and a thirteen centimeter gain over two point three meters. So there we go, that's the gradients that we're playing with. Now on to measuring the weights of those wagons. Okay, so steel your wife scales and measure the weight of some logos. Don't tell her if you uh, can buy her in the street that I've stolen them. Still got flour on them. Probably more prototypical use. Okay, let's do that again. I think I may have messed that up. Yeah, it's one of the perennial questions asked on forums and Facebook and Twitter, and particularly the beginner pages of um, Facebook, is what length do I need to get a certain height increase? So I put an incline calculator on my website. Um, go and check it out, there's a link down below in the show notes um, and it'll tell you what grades you have for a given height and length if you need assistance getting that I'll have a calculator on the website that'll tell you the answer um, it'll then show you whether you're in the realms of what model railroaders, railways 
class as prototypical or as or actually you're in the realms of what you know real railways actually do and if you're then outside of that realm whether you're outside what certain suppliers will recommend so I'll give each of those um, suppliers and what they recommend as well as I said a link on the, the calculator on my website okay so let's get these weights down Wow, it's almost too big to go on there. So the Royal Mail, 107. I'm really pleased with this wagon. It's got these little uh, levers on the bottom, so you can see that well. So as they run over different things in the, you can put in the track, it opens up the uh, mail things. I'm tempted to try and get them to work. But yeah. Watch this space. Okay, the modern wagon, Pentoin Colliery, oh, 28. Pentoin Colliery. Okay, there's one of these nice coaches. That's 47 grams. Another nice coach, 46 grams. They're essentially the same, those, but just different liveries. Uh, there's two of these Chance and Hunts, so I'm going to assume they're the same. 25. Just check for consistency's sake. Oh, 28. There we go. There's two of them. Done. The Wittebix is 33. The Rail Freight Wagon, 35. Yeah, quite like that. 35 grams, Rail Freight. Rail Freight Wagon. The Trimite. I thought I got two of these, so there must be one of these somewhere else. 33 grams. And finally, this one. Which is a low plank. How many planks is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven plank. Well, freight wagon it is 53 grams long wheelbase. The wheelbase of the wagon will also have a, an impact. Uh, the longer it is, particularly going around a corner, the, the more impact, not particularly, when it's going around a corner, the more impact it'll have. Then just quickly to the locos, hopefully they don't fall off. Uh, so the class 121 is 383 and the very beastly oh, class 37 is 554. We have a winner. Okay, I'll tally these up now and let you know the weight of the wagons, weight of the trains even, going up the hill. Okay, so hopefully you can see my scribblings and the lovely Class 37, which weighs half a kilo. Okay, so the weights of all the wagons, um, ten wagons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, yep, ten wagons was 435 grams. The 121 at 383 grams made the total weight of that train as it was going up the hill 818 grams and the class 37 was 989 grams in total. So the best part of a kilo and 800 grams essentially for the class 121 going up the hill. So yeah quite a bit of weight they were pulling can't deny that. Okay, so this is the class 121 going up the hill at 
Slow and steady wins the race. Again, no difficulties. And then coming back down at 30%. Hopefully they don't run away this time. Yeah, much better. There's certainly quite a lot of friction once they get into that secondary just curve of the bomb. All the wagons concertina are up, that's for sure. Okay, so this is the class 37 approaching the bottom of the hill at about 30% speed on my lovely Holby Select. And yeah, essentially towing pretty much apart from two every wagon I own. All my goodies that I got from my uncle, plus all the ones I bought myself, mainly coal wagons. And as you can see, pretty much seamless. A bit creaky on some of the wagons, but uh, yeah, handled that not bad at all. I'll just run that back down to the bottom now. Yeah, there's a radius 2 curve heading into the incline, which is just going into now the bottom wagon, which obviously makes it a bit of a challenge. Um, you can see the friction as they all bunch up as it goes around that corner. But yeah, no problem at all. Okay, now we'll go up the big hill at 50% with the Class 37 towing all the wagons. Here she comes now. Again, no difficulties, plain sailing. Come back down at 50% now. There's quite a speed jump once you get to about 60%, so we'll do that one next. Um, just check that there's no issues. Okay, now at 60%. And there she goes, leaps into life. As like I said, there's a hell of a speed differential. <laughs> Flying up the hill. Better stop it before it's the top. Yeah, no problemos. This could be fun coming down on those tight corners. Ooh. No, handle them admirably. And there we go. I won't take it any higher because uh, I'll be asking for derailments. Okay, so the final quick test of the big hill is now I've raised the total height up to 16 centimeters, if you can see that. Apologies. Don't have the best of liquid tape measures. Okay, so, yeah, there we go. So, I've raised the total height up to, to 16 centimeters, but I've kept the the rest of it essentially the same, so, a bit of freehand work, apologies. Yeah, so, this all, this end all stays the same. So we've still got 2.4 meters. Um, and this time, instead of climbing 13 centimetres, we're going to climb 16 centimetres, which gives us 
a 1 in 15 gradient. So, let's see how they get on. Now as I mentioned earlier on, the transition from flat to inclined is the key thing to get right in terms of keeping it smooth to avoid derailments. Now, as you'll see here, and as I stated earlier on, I haven't changed the geometry of the last bit of this track, so it's still 1 in 18, um, excuse me, 1 in 18 for that first second radius bit that you can see down in the corner there by the curves. And then once it gets on to the, um, the CLS proper, onto the baton itself, that's when the gradient goes up to 1 in 15. So in terms of transition, it's a bit smoother. But I just want to show it going up a straight incline. So this test is slightly different to the last one. Um, it will be going up a 1 in 15, but with the majority of the coaches and what have you, the wagons, going straight, not around the corner. So the friction losses will certainly be less in this case. Okay, so the first run of the class 37, up the big hill, take two, here she goes. Let's give her 50%, don't want to make a struggle. Okay, she's around the big first curve, she's up the shallow bit and now she hits the 1 in 15 proper. So there's still four or five wagons which are still on the curve, so I think this is representative of how hard it is. You can hear a strain a bit more, and the wagon strain a bit more than last time. Whoa, that was close. Okay, let's bring it back. And let's try the class 1 to 1. The loco is not even designed to pull any wagons. <laughs> anyway, let's see how she fares. So that's the class 37 back off the big hill. Plain sailing. If the controller could work out which way to drive the thing. <laughs> anyway, that's all good. Okay, so this is the class one to one. Um, for his first run, I'm going to run it at Leyden. Give it the best chance of not being too strained. So, this is at 50%. Let's see how she fares. And now she's on the one in 15. Yeah, not bad. Seems fairly effortless. Right. Let's collect her up to the whole rake. Okay. okay, so here goes the class one, two, one. With the full rake. It's about. 55% there. Let's give it a fighting chance. And now she's on the 1 in 15. <laughs> no problem. Wow, that was perilously close. I really should put a buffer stop up there. Okay, and now she's coming back down. Yeah. Seamless. You, they're laughing. Okay, so we've all seen the films. How far would a runaway wagon go on a 1 in 15 slope? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, as I was mentioning earlier on, there is a significant variation in friction between the wheels of these wagons and the track, and in terms of how much resistance they give to the loco. So what I'm going to do is just demonstrate this quickly to you with the 10 wagons I've got. So first this uh, closed wagon here. I'll let it go from a set point and I'll record how far it goes around here. So that one went to there. Okay next we have the little trimite. Again we'll set it off in the same place. We'll let it run. Actually, you can give that one a little bit of a push. Um, so that didn't fare so well. It went half as far as the uh, 
There's the panel wagon. Uh, right, so one of the old fashioned wagons. As I said, these are Hornby plastic uh, plastic wheeled wagons. That one got to there. Again, the same one again, so just different livery. Give that one a go. Okay, that one went even shorter. Now, one of the longer, heavier wagons. Let's give this one a run. Uh, yeah, a little, feel a little better. As I said, a bit heavier, about twice the weight. Uh, I think that was about 50, 50 grams. 53 grams, there we are. So, yeah, near the twice the weight. Now, this is the new. Hornby wagon that I recently bought, not one of my goodies. Now watch this one go. I don't know. <laughs> Bang, and the buffer stops. And there's actually a slope on this bit of uh, track here, so she'll just carry all the way back down. So yeah, anyway, that one went all the way to the buffers. And then finally, and quickly if I can, the Royal Mail wagon. So I'm trying to do all this one-handed while holding pretty heavy camera. Okay, so this one was 107 grams. But you can see, even though three times the weight, due to the friction, because it's a very long wheelbase, obviously it's the longest one I have here, it did not fare well at all. Went about the same distance as wagons, which were about 30 grams. So yeah, uh, not just the weight, you need to focus on wheel length, wheel base length, and also whether it's got nice metal wheels, nice bearings, etc, etc, etc. So yeah, short wheel base, metal wheels, significant difference. Um, if I was climbing this hill with 10 of these, it would have been even easier. And who knows what would have been achievable, maybe a, a 1 in 10. I wasn't willing to risk it with these, my new Locos and these old wagons. But yeah, there we go. So, the moral of the story is, if you're in a runaway train, <laughs> on a 1 in 15, and you have the chance, jump out of the nice metal-based, <laughs> metal-wheeled, short wheelbase wagon and jump into an old Royal Mail one with plastic wheels <laughs> and you'll be safe as I was is. Right, cheers folks, I hope you enjoyed that special. Um, yeah, thanks to my 100 subscribers, I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you very much for watching what can be sometimes quite painful and I really appreciate you coming. And so from the class 37 and from my class 121 and shortly I'll be doing a review of these tunnel pieces which came from the same guy as did that uh, embankment which I think are a marked improvement on these Hornby ones from 20 years ago. Um, yeah, and I think beauty. Okay, thanks all for coming. Oh, I got I just realised I didn't do the wheat bricks and the chase and hunt. Ah, oh. oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so sorry, folks. Let's just quickly do these now. So the chase and hunt. Okay, she's on. Go. Ah, not dissimilar. And the next one. There she goes. Oh, wow. It's quite a variation in those two locos. Not only do they weigh three grams different, they, they also behave a little bit differently on the track. But again, in the same region as the, as the rest of them. This Wheat to Bix one, don't hold up much hope for this guy. Yeah, <laughs> the worst of the lot. Um, 33 grams, but yeah, it just feels like quite a poorly made wagon, so I'm not surprised by that. 
Anyway, yeah, there we go. Stay out of the nice fancy new Hornby wagons with metal wheels. Cheers folks. See you again soon on Abba Holt Junction.